So I've been trying to gain a platform for quite some time uh, to discuss, you know, my biofuel cells starting in early college. Uh, you know, I spoke with my professors who told me that my questions were above their education and pay level, um, which I don't fault them. I thought I actually had quite a good amount of good college professors, despite the small college, technical college I went to. Uh, really appreciate my ethics teacher, Professor Smith. But over the years, of course, I've tried a lot of different ways to get a platform, talk to my ideas, just trying to get in the conversation with someone who has more knowledge on the topic that is really looking to help. So we've tried everything from, of course, you know, the streaming right now to uh, reaching out to them on Twitter, to reaching out to their publicist, trying to, you know, of course, reach them directly via email, uh, mail. Um, I remember once I even tried to create a Facebook chain on my birthday because sadness. Uh, I reached out to local media, local news stations, and affiliates, um, to the actual news companies as well as on some of their websites directly submitting, I guess, to certain reporters as well. Um, we, of course, oh, what else is there? I know there's even more. I submitted it to another college. Of course, when I was younger, I found out how much it actually cost to file a patent. And of course, uh, due to my lack of schooling, my understanding of bio, chemistry and biomolecular concepts, um, you know, I feel that my patent, even if I did file, it would be full of holes and easily exploitable, which is something I'm trying to avoid. I thought about many a times just putting up a video and using YouTube as a source of copyright and talking about it. And as I sit here now recording this, I'm potentially thinking about creating a TikTok with this video in another attempt to launch a biofuel cell. And some of you might ask, why do I want to create a biofuel cell? Good question. It starts honestly with trying to help people, but understanding in this world, if you don't have money, if you don't have a platform, can you really do anything? And we always were taught to lead by example, which of course putting in the physical effort and work too, but that what we don't see is you have to lead the way financially too. You have to be willing to sometimes fund these projects yourself or find a way to fund them, uh, which of course then leads to other things. And one of my early uh, thoughts was basically a lot of my other ideas that I want to help people with you need money for. Um, you know, I joked with my friends uh, that I spoke with about the, my Africa River project many a times that this doesn't happen unless I create a biofuel cell and take over a multi-trillion dollar global industry. Um, you know, and so the course, the problem always is a lot of times once people become so rich, how is it? You know, it's hard to resist the urge to, you know, go out and live this luxurious life. You worked very hard for it, um, you know. But at the same time, uh, I don't know, man, if it's just, I just always grew up dirt poor or maybe, you know, my internal strife in life and, you know, uh, dealing with suicide and all that kind of stuff changes your viewpoints on on life. Uh, I actually wrote in my sociology class how I feel like working with children was an eye-opening experience for me. It's how I met my girlfriend at the YMCA. You know, I hope those kids are doing so well. I, I think about them so often, honestly. <sighs> I'd Like I told my kids, I don't want y'all to live a okay life. I want y'all to live a better life than me. I want you to honestly be able to come back in years later. And brag about how good your life is because that's I mean it's 
what we all want for our children. We want a better life than we had for our, our children, which I don't know. I wrote how I feel like more people should work with children, but at the same time working in the YMCA, I saw many people who did not care about children that were working with children, and uh, sad, very sad. But so we create a biofuel cell, we'd use that to, to lead the way to create money to help people to fund a eco-revolution in a way. Um, I just feel like a lot of problems are due to a lot, case in point, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is, is unbelievable. The crowd power of crowdfunding and crowdsourcing, I should say unbelievable but, but of course we've lost faith in a lot of nonprofits that have extorted our good faith in them um you know the red cross took a lot of heat over haiti and if you don't think that their donations dipped um you know we see constantly on crowdsourcing websites scams and uh, i feel like and originally, my name of my nonprofit that I wanted to start was called the One Foundation because, you know, we're all one. But that's a whole other topic. I once discussed with someone being able to find a common ground with someone. And actually, someone put it to me best. It's not middle ground. It's common ground. Um, and that common ground... Uh, let's say no matter what side of the aisle left right red blue whatever aisle where you sit if there you saw a homeless person in need that was trying to fix their life and god just gave you a magic button said press this button there are no repercussions i will make sure to help this man get back on the right i think 90 percent of humanity would press that button however so then we have to examine where does the conflict between the two sides start. It's not in actually helping the person, it's in how we help the person. And then we, especially now, are so polarized that we just don't discuss rationally either side and it's just both sides saying whatever they want and no one really discussing the issue at hand. It's, it's disheartening to watch every day. So we get lost in the how. But I feel like there's, because we can find the common ground, if you can continue just to boil away at points and figure out a common ground, a common, at that point, I should say a middle ground on the, based upon the common ground, then we can actually create effective change. One of my points was... Um, in my Africa River project, we send billions of dollars of aid to sub-Saharan countries every year, but just our allocation is poor. The uh, responsibility and oversight is poor. And on top of that, we are band-aiding a problem, which nothing in life aggravates me more than band-aiding a problem especially when there's a potential long-term solution. And don't get me wrong, my long-term solution is slightly crazy, and I'll be the first one to admit I am not a meteorologist. I do not know how to build a model to analyze weather patterns and potential changes that that would create because that is something that definitely needs to be discussed. And I even acknowledge that in my speech 